Do the other one. What's your name, little girl? Let it down. If you pay close attention in the top left-hand corner of that first clip when I showed nine-year-old Cheyenne sitting in my 1965 Chevy C10, you can see Cedar walking out of frame as she's watering the front yard on the new old house that we had just purchased for the sum total of about $50,000. We sold our house down in Gilbert, then relocated to Snowflake with our plumbing company. And we moved around and rented a few different houses until we felt the market had stabilized. And again, we bought a bank owned home for a price that reflected the market had bottomed out. That being said, the house needed a lot of work but let me tell you about that truck real quick i had a client that owed us a little bit of money and he traded that truck to me for the money that was owed and i took that truck and turned it into what i called the shop truck I wanted it to look like an old Chevy truck that had been around the block a few times. And the idea behind it is that it would be used to deliver parts and pick up parts and different things like that for our plumbing company. The plan was to have the name of our plumbing company painted onto the doors of that truck and use the truck as needed, but also take it to the local car shows and do different things like that that might bring some eyes our way as far as our plumbing company is concerned. But shortly after finishing that truck, as usual, 
I sold it. That truck is now sitting in someone's garage in Sweden. Yes, Sweden. As I watch that video of little Cheyenne, who is now 19 years of age, naturally I think back of the good old days of maybe a less complicated time when my only goal was to make sure that we had enough work to pay the bills and feed the family. But I look at that old truck and I have a feeling that I will find another one of those 65 big window C10s in the near future assuming that I get all the projects finished on the house. I thought this was a great opportunity to use that video clip, partly because we finished up the flooring on Cheyenne's room this week. Shortly after buying that house, I started tearing the house apart, getting ready to redo it in a way that we wanted it to be done as it needed to be updated. And somewhere I have a picture of Rhett sitting on my shoulder, pulling ceiling tiles off the ceiling before we hung new drywall in one of the bedrooms. Rhett was about six years old at that time. It seems that this is just how we do things. We're always trying to make the best of what we have. And while I love the projects and I love working hard, I'm ready to get the house finished up in such a way where Cedar doesn't have to ask me when I'm gonna get the next project done inside the house. So really all that we have left on the house is a little bit of paint and touch up work the handrail going up the stairs, the LVP flooring in the pantry, which I'll finish this week, and the laundry room flooring. Now there's always gonna be something I'm sure. Anything I can do to make Cedar's life a little bit more comfortable, I'm gonna do, but I think the big projects are behind us as far as the house is concerned. But I will always have projects. That's just who I am. When it comes to our property here and how I can improve things, I'm always trying to think about what I can do.
On top of that, I'm thinking about building a lodge of some kind. Instead of putting a bedroom in my shop and eating up potentially valuable space, there's part of me that's thinking about building a decent sized lodge where family and friends can have a place to stay and gather when they might be in town. But there's plenty of other projects I need to get done before I do something like that. I'm regularly asked what I'm listening to when I'm working on my projects. Most of the time I'm listening to books. If I can't find a book that I haven't listened to before, I oftentimes cycle through whatever Louis L'Amour book or David R. Lewis book might be available on the Overdrive Media app. But this week I had an opportunity to listen to a new book that has caused me to do some serious thinking. The book is called Finding Everett Ruiz by David Roberts. Some of you may be familiar with the movie and or the book called Into the Wild about a young man that wanders around the country, in some cases living off the land, finds his way to Alaska, with the intentions of living completely off-grid, being self-sufficient, but it ended up costing him his life in the process. That young man was heavily influenced by Everett Ruiz. Everett Ruiz did something similar, wandering all over the Southwest from about 1927 to 1931 when he disappeared. This young man was 16 when he started on his walkabout and he disappeared around the age of 20. He wandered around the Southwest, going from the Navajo Nation in Arizona to New Mexico to Utah, even Colorado. And portions of this time, he would live by himself, sometimes using old Anasazi Indian ruins for his shelter. Now, like the McCandless kid in Into the Wild, this young Everett Ruiz, in my opinion, was not as prepared as maybe he could have been, but the story around his life and his challenges are fascinating. The desire that he had to leave civilization and wander around in some of the most remote places in the world he could not get out of his system. It was a wonderful read and I've gone back and started over a few different times. But it's fascinating to me that some people just have that overwhelming desire to disconnect from the easy, 
predictable way of life and wander around in the wilderness. And I can relate to that. I will say that getting Cheyenne's bedroom finished and getting the bathroom finished is one step closer in my life to spend more time out in nature where I prefer to as well. This coming Sunday's video will be all about our new solar system and battery bank and we can't wait to tell you about it. Okay, let's talk about uh, the last few days. We have not gotten as much done as we thought we would because we've had, I got a new, my, my laptop updated and all of a sudden I'm having issues with videos. Well, you got a new phone too. So to connect got a new the phone, phone with the new laptop anyway. has been kind of a nightmare. But, so we, we had a lot, really a lot of good footage that uh, could have been used. But anyway, bathroom is done. Trim is done in the bathroom. It needs to be touched up in the bathroom. Cheyenne's room is done. Uh, trim, I did not paint that trim. I cocked it, but it has not been painted. Um, pantry behind us is the next step. We're literally, as, as soon as this is finished, I'm gonna, we're gonna start pulling everything out of that, that pantry, but Which it takes- gonna take us a long time. Yeah, <laughs> it takes almost as much time to move stuff around, but man, we can see a light at the end of the, tunnel and it feels like a house. Having a finished flooring, um, transitioning from room to room to room, all of a sudden makes it feel like one, one, one complete thing. Um, and we all know that if you've done this before, if you've been in construction, living in construction of your house while everybody's home is kind of a joke. It kind of takes everything that much longer because we do have to move everything and, and put everything back and clean everything. and. And you still have to live and take care of the kids and family. It's a pain. And it's a giant pain. Yeah. It's a mess. It is a mess. It, it's the way we do things. Mm -hmm. so. And we're not done yet. There's, Cedar just pointed out that she would rather have plantation shutters than blinds. Oh, yeah. Because I did not want to clean. I knew the house was going to get disaster when we were doing all these other projects. And I was not looking forward to cleaning blinds. But... Shutters are definitely more easy to take care of, to clean, to keep the dust down, and they're, like they're so much prettier. Three times the price. Uh, they're they're beautiful, but that's some regular craftsmanship. But I mean, it, anyway. But once you once you <clears throat> purchase once, you'll have them for forever. We hope. Well, I'm not doing it again you, unless you decide to change it or kids break them or something. I don't know. No, I don't Hopefully know. that doesn't happen. But anyway, but they just look so, so pretty. She, she's got. She thinks. We're gonna see if if I can make it work. I can make it work down here. I, I think I can make it work on. I don't know if I can do it in the kids' bedrooms because anyway. So the point is, we're gonna continue the construction. The, you know, the, the 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 light at the end of the tunnel during this process for me is that if I get enough of the house finished, then Cedar's not going to. Uh, Ruby wants to join the conversation. Um, Cedar's not going. She, you know, the Cedar doesn't ask for a lot. She doesn't, she doesn't um, put a whole lot of pressure on me to get things done as far because she knows it's going to happen. But once it's done, done, I don't have to, me, I don't have to worry about um, the house anymore. There may be some little things here and there that we'll do. Over, I'm sure I'll, I'll, we'll always be trying to better 
uh, things, but um, but the, the the big stuff's done. You know, we're we're not going to be sanding the, the countertops. The the crazy thing is with the countertops, the little spots that we had in them have gone away. Uh, we still have a little bit on the other side, but we, we couldn't be happier with how they turned out. Mm -hmm. And so we're not doing any more big. The only other thing that I got to do is the, you know the laundry room up there. Get the new um, get the new flooring finished, in the, which we already have it. I just need to get it done. And then some uh, some paint and trim work, and that's about it. And then the, and then the plantation shutters, if that's what we're going to do. And I'm sure we'll always. But these little tedious things are like they eat at you. Like you know they need to get done. And well, yeah, I don't. I want, I want the house done. Mm -hmm. We're we're overdue. It's, it's it's overdue but also like living in construction and to, and like we still have to live we still take care of the kids you still have you know we clean up it takes forever just to clean after yeah. anything in here yeah and we shift things around and it, it takes a lot more time yeah so the plan is so just having the transitions finished between the bath the bathroom feels finished now the bathroom feels like it's it's um uh well, it just feels part of the house that side of the house was the addition side now it feels like it was it's part of the house. I don't see the seam, the concrete seams every time I walk into the bathroom now. So I just need to finish the pantry, get these few things finished, and then um, you know, again, we're gonna I'm I'm gonna put a new roof on it. I'm I'm thinking about doing some major changes to the pitch on the back of the house. And if I change that pitch, I'm gonna have to change the front porch to match it. So I'm always going to be do, but but to be doing it outside versus inside will be a huge. Well, and so, and obviously, when the weather's better, you're not getting on the roof when it's no, 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 and it'll it be summertime when it's dry. I will put my foot down about that. <laughs> the next um, project, once the, uh, the the next thing on the horizon, once the paint and trim, baseboard, all that stuff's done, is the handrail on the stairs, building that handrail, and I think I've got it figured out how I'm going to do it. So. There's some welding involved and some fabricating involved with that. And that's gonna be a little bit of a, of a chore, but um, I'm kind of looking forward to that one. So um, then the, um, I guess those shutters and that's about it, so. Okay, let's talk about flooring. Oh, oh yeah. So we went with the LVP, luxury vinyl, what do we say, planking, planking Plank, whatever, whatever. Planking. And um, so far we have loved it. You don't need an underlayment. It comes attached to the each individual plank. Is that what you would say, call it? So let's talk about that for like two seconds because we've gotten a million people mm -hmm. reaching out to us telling us that we didn't install it properly or that we should have done whatever. So in the early days, and there's still there's still people that use the foam underlayment. Uh, there, but but in my opinion, the good products have it installed on the back of it. So this is a little bit banged up because this is one of my blocks I use to knock pieces in. And it says right on the box, underlayment is attached. Yeah, no no underlayment needed. Mean. So this, there's your padding. So once it snaps together, once the pieces are in place, the padding is in place. I will tell you that the, the difference between having the padding in place versus having the rollout underlayment padding, this, one of the issues I had with, with, um, the, the different alternatives to real wood flooring is that feeling you get when you walk, that hollow, almost bouncy feeling. If you have that rollout flooring, it it's more bouncy to me. This is not as um, not as bad mm -hmm. to me. So it has a little different sound, but we're also used to the concrete too. Yeah. When, when there's no sound, but this has a little, but there's definitely more of a cushion. And there's a give. I have noticed that. Um, so the concrete did stay pretty warm. If we kept the fire going, it was pretty warm, but this definitely has a more overall warm feeling. Yeah, there's an insulation factor to that foam. Um, that's that's something that somebody said was, was, was there was an insulation factor to it. So um, the good stuff, in my opinion, does not require the extra labor to lay out that underlayment. Um, and most decent products that are in that probably 250 to $4 a square foot have it attached. Um, and this stuff doesn't need glue. Yeah, no glue. This is glue. it's called a floating floor, so it's interlocking. Every piece is interlocking. The ends interlock. Uh, that's the whole point of this. Is it's interlocking and it has the ability to expand and contract. You're supposed to have a quarter inch buffer uh, all everywhere uh, on each end of the house, and uh, with the temperature changes, uh, it'll move around a little bit. But because it's not wood, because it's actually a, a poly product, it's not 
subject to the humidity uh, factor, where with real wood, you'll deal with humidity changes. Um, so it's, we love it. It just, I just need to get the few more things, you know, rather than having a project at 93%, like I oftentimes <laughs> do, I want to go ahead and just get this finished up and, and then I can go play outside and do the stuff I want to do. Go finish the shop. Once that comes up. So anyway, this, hopefully this coming Sunday's video will be the finished pantry. Uh, we picked up a couple of snowmobiles to try and use to get up to the shop, which my first- To the cabin. Uh, to the cabin. Didn't go so well my first time running it up there. I gotta learn to give her when I'm doing that, but, and then- <laughs> Do you need me to use my three-wheeler skills? Your three-wheeler skills? Yeah. We got a three-wheeler out there. <laughs> you wanna do it. If you learn so, to drive something on a three-wheeler, you're set for you life. You can drive anything. <laughs> you can drive anything. Okay, see you in a few days. Yeah. Wow, let's see those pearly whites.